starts right now. And this noon, it is still quiet across the Alamo City, but we are about to see what a difference a couple of hours can make. Right now, we're keeping an eye on the sky, and meteorologist Sarah Spivey is tracking some potentially severe weather. Sarah? Yeah, I like how you said potentially there, David, because we need to watch the radar. Between about 3 p.m. and 10 p.m., that's when we're going to be monitoring for storm development. If storms can get going, they would potentially become severe with large hail possible. This is what we call a conditional forecast. Certain conditions have to be met. One of those conditions is a little bit more sunshine uh, as we head into the afternoon. And this weekend, we are going to be stormy and rainy at times. So it's not just this time frame that we have the potential for rain. That continues into the weekend as well. On Authority Radar right now, you can see that it is fairly quiet. There's some light rain ongoing around San Antonio, just some mist. And here's the satellite picture. This is where the Front is right now working its way through the hill country. You can see some cumulus clouds developing ahead of this front. Cumulus clouds, the precursor to thunderstorms. So this is the area that we're going to be watching for storm development. The Storm Prediction Center has included the San Antonio metro area. It points to the west for the highest risk for hail. However, severe weather potential exists for all of the KSAT 12 viewing area. Again, if storms can get going, they would potentially contain large hail, perhaps even some damaging wind gusts. And the time frame we're looking at is after 3 p.m. Coming up in the forecast, more in depth look at the authority radar and a timeline of the rain potential this afternoon and evening. David. All right, Sarah, we'll look forward to that. Thank you. New this noon, a trial came to a sudden stop today. Jose Ruiz has been on trial this week for the death of five year old Mercedes Lasoya. However, things this morning came to a halt because of one of the defense attorneys needed medical attention. Our Erica Hernandez is joining us live now outside the courtroom. So first off, Erica, how is that defense attorney doing? Yeah, David, Teresa Conley seems to be doing okay. She was talking as she was taken out by EMS. I'm being told for precautionary reasons, they wanted to get her checked out. Now, this all happening right as the chief medical examiner was on the stand. Dr. Kimberly Molina was describing the injuries all over five-year-old Mercedes Lasoya. She described how the extensive trauma all over her body caused her muscles to break down, which resulted in kidney and heart failure. Mercedes also had a fracture in her spine. Dr. Molina says it could be from overextension of the back. Overall, Mercedes suffered from so much injury to her body and overexertion that it did lead to her death. Now, just a little while ago, the trial did resume with co-counsel cross-examining Dr. Molina. As that was done, then the jury was called out for the day. So we are done for today. This is what I'm being told. This is the state's last witness, so they will be resting. So we will resume on Monday morning and see what the defense has in store, David. Erica, let's talk about that jury for just a second. You've been in the courtroom all week long. What is the reaction has been through this emotional testimony with with not only testimony, but also some of the evidence has been presented? You could tell that it has been very difficult. There are times that you see them just crying and, and grabbing tissues, especially yesterday. Yesterday was a very emotional day, not just for the jury, but for everybody, myself included, sitting in the gallery. A lot of the images and, and videos that we've been seeing are very heartbreaking, David. So it, it is definitely taking a toll on the jury. And, and that being said, they're going home for the weekend. So how, I know they can't watch TV or listen to anything or talk about the case or anything like that. But this has got to be a going to be a long weekend for a lot of those jurors if, if this emotional toll has been taken on them so far. Right. Yeah, it, it's going to be a long weekend, but hopefully it, it, it will all come to an end early next week. Like I said, this is the state's last witness. The defense is expected to recall some of the witnesses that have already been called, but we could get into deliberations as early as Monday afternoon or on Tuesday. All right, Erica, thank you very much for that update. 
Hopefully that defense attorney continues to improve. We'll, we'll be back at it on Monday, so we'll look forward to that. Thank you. San Antonio police are still trying to figure out what led to the 17-year-old Caitlin Hernandez's death. And today, loved ones are planning to gather for a vigil. San Antonio police say Caitlin was strangled to death on Tuesday. Her body left in a drainage ditch on Dell Oak Drive. That's near Kruger Middle School. Today's vigil is scheduled to take place at 4 o'clock at the bridge. That's near the area where Caitlin was found. Crime Stoppers is offering a reward for information that leads to an arrest in the case. If you know anything, you are asked to call Crime Stoppers at the number there on your screen, 210-224-STOP. And a heads up, if you or, know, or you know someone who is still trying to figure out their taxes and hadn't done them yet, you only have about a month left, but you can still get help filing and it's free. San Antonio residents can use the Volunteer Income Tax Assistance Program until April 15th to file their taxes for free. Vita services available at 13 locations throughout San Antonio and Fredericksburg. Select locations offer refund anticipation loans to Vita flyers, filers in select locations. And they don't charge fees or interest. If you'd like some more information, all you have to do is go to the VitaSA.com or .org website. VitaSA.org. And even as the weekend gets off to a soggy start, there's still a lot of events planned in the downtown area, and you know what that means, traffic. RJ Marquez has a look at the potential trouble spots for you this weekend. Well, there's going to be a lot going on in downtown San Antonio, of course, if the weather cooperates. So let's take a look exactly at what we're going to be seeing in terms of some street issues and also some things that are going to be taking place. The biggest two things taking place this weekend, of course, are the St. Patrick's Day River Celebration. That's going to be up by North Presa and La Soya right there at Mad Dogs. And you can see the river route right here kind of circling around to the St. Mary's area and also coming up on Soledad. So keep that in mind. There's going to be a lot of people there. And if you go a little bit south on South Alamo Street, there's going to going to be a lot of people at the Tejano Music Awards at Hemisphere. Let's show, let's show you some video exactly of the San Antonio River when it gets dyed green. Of course, this has become a pretty cool annual event across the city of San Antonio, and there are thousands of people that make it out there for all the fun and festivities out there for St. Patrick's Day. So again, a lot of people expect it to be in this area. As we come back out to our maps here real quick, I want to show you real quick one more time. This is the route there for the river starting there at North Presa and La Soya, but we also want to let you know about some street garages, some city street garages that are going to be available. The Houston Street Garage, that's one option. The Convention Center Garage and the Alamo Lot. Those are all city-owned parking lots. Now, this is not all that's taking place there. The Majestic is also going to have an event there this weekend, as well as the Lila Cockrell Theater and the Tobin Center. So be safe and make sure to plan ahead. All right, a lot going on this weekend. Thanks, RJ. The Spurs taking their home show on the road. They're headed to Austin, a preview of their two up there coming up. She did it. A local doctor reaching new heights. University health doctor Kelly Hinchman was climbing Mount Kilimanjaro to raise money and awareness for organ donations. Yesterday, the doctor and 11 other climbers made it to the summit of the 20,000 foot mountain. University Health posted these photos on social media showing the climbers at the mountain's peak. To make it even more special, they reached the top on World Kidney Day. So congratulations to the doctor and all her fellow climbers. A little cold up there at the top of that mountain, I imagine. Oh, very. Not you, so much here, though. It no, is muggy. Here. Can you feel no. the humidity? That's one of the ingredients for the potential for some stronger storms this afternoon. Let's take a look at the aquifer. The aquifer is actually up two tenths of a foot, but because it's nearly 30 feet below the monthly average, we could use some more rain for the aquifer. And in the pollen count, oak is still high past 1,000 molds, hackberry and mulberry are low. What are we talking about in the forecast? Well, we are monitoring the radar for storm development from 3 p.m. to 10 p.m. If storms pop, they could be severe with large hail possible. But rain chances continue into the weekend and even for an opportunity for rain next week as well. Again, we could use the rain. Just wish it wouldn't come with the potential for severe weather. Details coming up. So this is going to be one of those weird days and maybe even on through the weekend that you don't see 
complete coverage all the time. It's a pop up here, a pop up there, and this That's one could be bad, and this one may not as bad as that one. So exactly, David. You remember learning in school if then statements, if this, mm -hmm. then that. Yep. If storms pop, then, then they will be severe. Uh, so it is an if then forecast. So it's called conditional forecast. Meteorology 101 on spring break. Exactly. I mean, it is springtime. Spring like yep. storms are possible. Yep. Let's go ahead and take a look at the authority radar right now. Fairly quiet around San Antonio, although we are still seeing some sprinkles out there uh, closer to the Leon Valley area, SeaWorld, Oakland Estates. You can see some sprinkles out there, but these are not storms. Uh, the storms have really been to the north of San Antonio, although we did have a little bit of light rain earlier this morning. Here's the weather setup, though. Not only do we have the potential for rain today, but for the next several days, it's all because of this big low pressure system that we've been monitoring. It's going to be sending rounds of energy our way. Take a look at these storms that have occurred in North Texas. You see how they're in clusters and they're a bit random. That's a great example of the kind of storms we are going to be seeing over the next couple of days. However, today we have a setup in place where if storms pop, then they will be severe. Take a look at the weather setup. Cold front moving through north, uh, northern parts of Bear County and even into parts of the Hill Country. This is where that front is. And right ahead of that front is where we're going to focus for the potential for some of those storms to pop this afternoon. There, the, if storms develop, they will potentially contain large hail. That is the main risk with any storms that develop today. Also, some gusty winds are possible if you get a storm. And because the atmosphere has so much juice in it, you can feel the humidity. Any storms that develop will potentially contain some pretty heavy rain as well. Tornado threat is not zero, but it's not high at all. It's very, very low. So we'll be paying very close attention to the authority radar this afternoon. This is one potential of what we could see. Again, notice storms very random in nature. This is 3 p.m. The time frame we're watching for is after 3 p.m. That's when I think storms could get going and that could continue into the evening commute as well. Again, this this particular forecast model has some of those storms to the south of San Antonio, but this cluster could very easily be right over San Antonio around the hour uh, that a lot of people are heading home to enjoy their weekend. So keep that in mind and keep the authority uh, weather authority app handy with you. We've got a radar on there. We will be able to be live right to the palm of your hand if need be. But by about 10 o'clock, our storm, our storm chances are still there, but our severe weather threat goes away pretty significantly. So I don't anticipate any severe weather in the overnight hours, although we could still have a few rumbles of thunder here and there. And speaking of tomorrow, rain chances continue tomorrow as well. But let me get you through the day today. Again, this afternoon after 3 p.m., that's when we're going to be monitoring for severe weather. It's when we have our best chance for rain, about 60% chance, 60% coverage, so not a guarantee for everybody. And then by 8, 9 o'clock, still some severe weather possible, but in the overnight hours, even though we'll still see a few showers and maybe a rumble of thunder, that severe weather risk is going to go down. Let's continue into the forecast tomorrow. Early tomorrow morning, a few showers possible, but really I think we'll have a brief break in the rainfall. Then as we head toward the lunch hour, a few scattered showers and even a rumble of thunder possible as well during the day today. Coverage once again about 60%. Even tomorrow night, Saturday night into Sunday, some storms are possible. So yes, this weekend you'll be dodging a few downpours. Highs will be right near 70 degrees. If you don't get any rain today, we still need rain. So even though this comes on the last weekend of spring break, we still need rainfall in San Antonio, the Hill Country, South Central, Texas. Looking ahead to the forecast, yes, a rainy weekend, times of rain possible. Front moves through. That front that I just picked pointed out to you, it's going to stall and then it's finally going to move through on Monday. As it does so, our temperatures cool, highs only in the 60s next week. Another opportunity for rain, mainly Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. But again, we are going to be keeping our eyes on the radar. Meteorologist Mia Montgomery, myself, we are ready to go if need be to keep you guys safe and informed. And real quick, I think it's worth repeating. Get that uh, 
app on yeah. your phone because the radar that you look at on your phone is the same radar that you guys are looking at. So if you see some, if you're out enjoying spring break and all of a sudden you see something coming and you're not sure, there it is right there on your app. And it's the same stuff you guys use. So Exactly. KSAT Weather Authority app. All right. Get on there. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We'll see you back here in a few minutes. The Spurs just trying to finish out the season strong and they're going to Austin for the next couple of games. See if they can pick up some wins in the capital city. And it is March and there is some madness. It is the home game on the road weekend for the Spurs. They will play their next two games in Austin, starting tonight with the defending champion Denver Nuggets. The Nuggets are the best team in the West. The Spurs are the worst team in the West. All they have to do is play for pride now, and the young unit is plenty motivated to finish out the last 16 games of the regular season strong, and a little change of scenery might help that. All right, so here's the matchup for tonight. It's the Nuggets. And at the Spurs, the Nuggets, best in the West, once again tonight, 7.30, Moody Center in Austin. And if you are keeping score, Nikolai Jokic is still one of the best in the league. So that'll be fun for the Austin people to watch. The UJSA men's basketball team was knocked out of the first round of the AAC tournament by Temple Wednesday. A day later, head coach Steve Henson out of a job. No new contract after eight seasons. UTSA finished 11 and 21 in the school's first year as a member of the American Athletic Conference. Henson went 110 and 144 in his eight seasons. Associate head coach Mike Peck will serve as the interim head coach as the search for Henson's replacement begins. And a big time NFL pass register is coming home to the Houston Texans. Daniel Hunter was born in Jamaica, but grew up outside of Houston in Katy. And he's coming off a career year where he had 16 and a half sacks, two pass defended, four forced fumbles, 83 tackles, and 22 QB hits. Hunter was due for a big payday. His former team, the Vikings, didn't want to pay it, but the Texans did. And now we get to see Hunter alongside last year's third overall pick, Will Anderson Jr. Oh, man, that kid right there. I mean, he's, he's exciting, you know. Um, has a lot of tools. I was, I was with him earlier. And he's just, he just can't stop jumping, how eager he is to just go out there and just rush the passer together. Um, very good kid. I'm excited to just be able to go out there and teach him a lot of things that I know and help him become a better player. All right, good luck to them. Be fun to watch. Now to March Madness in full swing and a big weekend of college basketball with teams fighting for their spot in the tournament. ABC's Morgan Norwood has more for us. And NC State wins it over Duke here in the quarterfinals. They knock off the number two seed. Basketball magic that only happens in March as college teams buy for a ticket to the big dance. With Selection Sunday just two days away, overnight a do or die battle. In a stunning upset, 10th seed NC State knocking off 2nd seed Duke in the ACC Tournament quarterfinals, keeping their March Madness hopes alive. Carter, who really has to work defensively to the bucket. In a day of upsets, Devin Carter leading the 7th seeded Providence College Friars to a stunning upset over 2nd seed Creighton to reach the semifinals of the Big East Tournament. St. Bonaventure as the number 7 seed moves into the semifinal round. The teams battling it out for a spot on Selection Sunday when both the men and women will find out who they'll be up against for the March Madness Tournament. Clark with the ball in her hands. The three-peat is complete for the Iowa Hawkeyes. And all eyes are on the University of Iowa's Caitlin Clark after losing to LSU and Angel Reese in last year's championship, which drew 9.9 .9 million viewers. The NCAA scoring leader telling our Robin Roberts how she's gearing up for this time around. So how do you prepare for your final March Madness? March Madness, I think, in my opinion, is the best postseason tournament in all mm -hmm. of sports. And I've been on the losing side of an upset. My sophomore year, we lost to Creighton in the round of 32 and we were a two seed. So I think understanding, you know, your season can end in a blink of an eye, so you better be ready to play. But also, it goes so fast. Like, just soak in every single moment and every single second. So just enjoy it and have fun with my teammates because it'll be over before I know it. Yeah, the conference tournaments are one thing, but the uh, NCAA tournament, man, that is just something else. Best in sports. Certain types of exercise may work better than others when it comes to lowering your blood pressure. The moves to consider adding to your routine 
Coming up in the next half hour. And as we keep an eye on the weather here, people in the heartland are in recovery mode after severe storms led to tornadoes. Look at the destruction left behind still coming up. And new today at five, if tonight's meal includes black beans from a can, you're in luck. Consumer Reports is comparing brands to find out which ones will have you and your family piling them onto your plate. That's today at five after entertainment tonight. Outside with live cam. It was outside about 1030 this morning. We're going on the story and there's like a, just a little hint of blue in the sky. And you're kind of going, yeah. About that. Takes the look, sunshine. Look at that shot. You're going, yeah. Hmm, something about to happen. And it's a little counterintuitive, right? You think yeah. sun and you think, okay, it's not going to storm, but those pieces of sunshine act as fuel for the potential for storms later. And we do have the potential for storms later. From 3 p.m. to 10 p.m., we're going to be monitoring for storm development. There is a cap on the atmosphere right now. That cap is preventing storms from growing tall. But between the hours of 3 p.m. and 10 p.m., that cap will be a lot weaker. And if a storm pops, then it could become severe with large hail possible. And even beyond today, we have rain chances this weekend as well. We do need more rain. Let's take a look at the authority radar right now. We've really only got some light rain showers at the moment. Remember I was talking about that cap, this cap keeping these showers from developing into thunderstorms at the moment. But as I mentioned, we are watching the authority radar because a front has stalled out right over San Antonio and out toward Del Rio. And it's ahead of this front that we could start to see some storm development uh, and those storms could become severe. In fact, the Storm Prediction Center has uh, highlighted an area from Del Rio through San Antonio down toward Catula and Laredo for the potential for the highest potential for the risk for hail, a three on a scale of one to five. But even out to the east, there is still a potential for severe weather for areas like Gonzales and Hallettsville. So coming up in the forecast, we're going to talk a little bit more about a timeline. When should you be on alert for severe weather? When can you relax? And what does this weekend look like? David. All right, Sarah, thank you. We'll look forward to that. A widespread system outage forced McDonald's to temporarily suspend operations at thousands of restaurants around the world. The fast food chain says Friday's outages were not related to any cybersecurity event, but they didn't give us any more details. The outage affected restaurants, mobile ordering and self ordering kiosks. Countries affected include the U.S., Japan, the United Kingdom, Australia and Taiwan. Some restaurants took orders in person and then let the cooks know what they needed to make. Today, a judge ruled in Fulton County, Georgia, that District Attorney Fonnie Willis can stay on the election interference case against former President Donald Trump and his allies, but only if she removes the special prosecutor with whom she engaged in a romantic relationship. This comes after more than two months of court motions and hearings that included fiery testimony from Willis defending her relationship with special prosecutor Nathan Wade. In his decision, Judge Scott McPhee said highly critical of Willis and Wade's relationship, describing it as being the result of bad choices. However, he said that the evidence presented was not enough to support the allegations of conflict of interest. House Republicans opened their impeachment inquiry into President Biden six months ago. Now they're considering ending it. They currently lack the votes in their divided, narrow, more, narrow majority to impeach the president. Instead of moving forward with impeachment, Republicans are discussing whether to end their investigation by sending criminal referrals to the Department of Justice. Three committees are leading the inquiry. However, much of the final decision on how and when to end the inquiry will fall on House Speaker Mike Johnson. The clock is ticking as Congress faces yet another possible government shutdown. The next government funding deadline, March 22nd. Within one week left, negotiators are trying to hammer out deals on six bills. If that doesn't happen, funding will stop at a number of departments and agencies, including Homeland Security, Defense, Treasury, Education and Labor. A week ahead of the deadline also triggers certain protocols for departments now required to start making plans for a possible shutdown. This is the fifth time since September that lawmakers have run up against a funding deadline, passing stopgap bills just in time. Lawmakers already passed bills to fund several departments earlier this month. 200 tons of food now on its way to the people in need in Gaza. A ship packed with the food left Cyprus on Tuesday. The first maritime shipment of aid to the war-torn strip. 
On the Gaza shoreline, a group of Palestinians have told CNN that they are waiting patiently for the ship to arrive. This morning, the ship was just a few miles away from the Gaza coastline. This is the latest attempt to alleviate the humanitarian crisis five months into the war between Israel and Hamas. Gaza's health ministry said today that 149 people were killed over the past 24 hours. All right, how about this video of rare horizontal tornadoes getting sucked into a larger tornado. An Ohio man recorded this yesterday as a severe weather outbreak sparked tornadoes in the heartland. And as ABC's Morgan Norwood tells us, other communities are now having to dig out from heavy snow. From the heartland to the Midwest, millions tore through the region. Overnight in central Ohio, authorities say at least two people died in Lakeview when suspected twisters sliced through. Our laundry mat is gone. The old plastics building is just completely demolished. Downtown, it's bad. In Logan County, Ohio, daylight revealing the damage. Homes lifted from their foundation. And over in Winchester, Indiana, several buildings ripped apart. This one nearly unrecognizable. The metal siding wrapped around trees. I heard what sounded like a train. And then I started hearing sirens and things like that. And then my, my wife had got a text from a friend that she lives in Indy and her parents live down the road and their house was gone. In Selma, Indiana, authorities there say up to half of structures suffered some sort of damage. This is the first time anything like this that I can recall has happened in the town of Selma. Um, there's been some that have been close, but never that's impacted the actual town itself. And out west, the heavy snow piling on. ABC's Mola Lange in Golden, Colorado, just 15 miles west of Denver. It got slammed with about a foot of snow, as you can see it piling up on the ground, uh, burying cars. But believe it or not, there is a car underneath here. The whiteout conditions slamming the Mile High City with about 10 inches of snow and creating a mess on area roads. And that weather just wreaking havoc on travel. We're talking more than 800 flights in and out of Denver canceled yesterday. And that system now moving out, but thousands without power. Several schools in the area remain closed. I'm Morgan Norwood, ABC News, New York. An actor known for an iconic role in a Hollywood classic, making a pit stop here in San Antonio. It's all part of an effort to give back to the military community. What inspired him coming up? All right, let's talk exercise. The study finds that static exercise may be the best exercise for lowering blood pressure. That's exercise where you engage your muscles without movement, for example, doing squats or planks. The analysis reviewed 270 trials with nearly 16,000 participants. The trials include several different types of exercise, including static exercises, as well as aerobic and resistance training, wall squats, the most effective for reducing systolic pressure, and running, which is aerobic, was most beneficial for decreasing diastolic pressure, but isometric overall was the best for lowering both pressure and elements. Diabetes Alert Day is coming up in two weeks on the 26th. University Health will hold a resource fair focused on the disease, and you'll have a chance to learn more about it, plus learn more about A. 1C and speak with medical health experts. The event is being hosted by the Texas Diabetes Institute. You are encouraged to register before the event. We've got a link to do that on our website, KSET.com, in the KSET community section. The movie Forrest Gump turns 30 this year, and the man who played Lieutenant Dan was in Military City, USA yesterday, along with his band. Actor Gary Sinise says it's part of a plan to give back to those who have served our country. He does it all the time. The visit was part of a fundraiser that was filled with music and fun. The Gary Sinise Foundation supports those who protect us. Sinise and the Lieutenant Dan Band have performed more than 560 concerts to give thanks and bring joy to active military veterans, Gold Star families, wounded service members, and first responders. And I feel it's important because the work that's being done here is, is criti critically important. Um, and we can't take it for granted what these, this hospital staff goes through, what the patients and their families go through at these hospitals. Sinise says veterans in his family and his role as Lieutenant Dan inspired him to give back to those who serve. If you would like to help his cause, we've got all that information on our website, KSAT.com. I love that his role has compelled him to, to do something like that. Some 
actors have roles that follow them around and they kind of wish they wouldn't, but I know he's taken, taken a lot about this role and loves it. So. He's embraced it yeah. for sure. Let's embrace being weather aware this afternoon because we are going to be monitoring severe storm development between 3 p.m. and 10 p.m. It's one of those forecasts where if a severe storm, if a storm develops, it will become severe. Large hail would be the main threat. And rain continues into the weekend and we need some rain. The aquifer, although it's up two tenths of a foot over the past 24 hours, is down some nearly 30 feet from the monthly average. And the rain would help to wash out some of the oak. Oak is high in the pollen count mold hackberry, mulberry, all low. A detailed timeline of when we could see severe weather coming up. All right, David, we've been talking about the conditional forecast today. If then statements like what we learned in school. So if this happens, then this could happen. Exactly. All right. If storms pop, they will be severe. Then they will be severe. So let's go ahead and take a look at the All radar right. right now. Authority radar showing that we've got a few showers out there, but these are not going to develop into thunderstorms. The showers mainly falling out near Divine, southwest Bear County. You can see some showers there near Natalia as well. And even further out toward Lavernia, we've got some light rain showers as well. We did have some rain earlier today, even some storminess for areas south of San Antonio. As we look at uh, the rainfall amounts, uh, not a ton around San Antonio, really only a t uh, hundredth of an inch of rainfall, but some decent rain fell uh, down near Tilden, uh, as you can see. Otherwise, it is fairly quiet at the moment. We're going to continue to keep an eye on the authority radar. Again, the time frame we're watching for is 3 p.m. to 10 p.m. That's when severe storms are going to be possible around our viewing area. And rain continues into next week, too, all because of this big low pressure system that's just not going to move. It's sending rounds of energy our way. Take a look at these storms across North Texas. Notice that they're clustered and fairly random. That's the kind of weather we're going to be dealing with, clustered and fairly random storms. Although today, there's one more ingredient that makes severe weather possible and that's a cool front which is stalled out over San Antonio and it's along that front that we could end up seeing some storms start to pop especially off to the west here where we're getting a little bit more sunshine and then off uh, south of this front is where we could see some of those storms really pop and then from there if storms develop they could become stronger severe the main risk we'd be watching for today would be hail larger hail greater than the size of quarters and we'd be watching for some gusty winds as well with any storms that develop and if you get some rain there is so much moisture in the atmosphere it feels so soupy out there that is one of the ingredients for pockets of heavy rainfall, which could lead to pockets of flooding. But a tornado risk is very low. It's not zero, but it's very low. The bigger concern would be hail today. And here's a look at the future cast. And you can see that a cluster of storms is expected to develop somewhere from Del Rio to San Antonio out to Gonzales. Don't be paying close attention to the location of this cluster of storms. It could be out to the west. It could be further out to the east. This is just an idea of the kind of storminess we could see. And that could continue into the evening commute as well. Uh, potentially for San Antonio areas south and east. As we head into the overnight hours, our severe weather threat really diminishes. We could still see some showers overnight and even some rumbles of thunder, but the risk for hail really decreases in the overnight hours. We'll keep you posted, though. Again, there could be some rumbles of thunder early tomorrow morning. Make sure to tune into GMSA. I'll be there tracking the radar. As we head into uh, your KSAT 12 hour forecast, I just want to walk you through the timeline for the rest of the day today from 4 p.m onward we'll be monitoring for the risk for severe weather that'll continue into the early evening hours but it's after 10 p.m that we see our severe weather threat go down even though showers and storms are still possible as we head into saturday early tomorrow morning Again, I don't think we'll have a ton of rain early tomorrow morning. I think overnight it's possible, but early tomorrow morning, a little bit of a lull in the activity, but closer to lunch, that's when we could see some more rumbles of thunder uh, and a few showers out there as well. So the weekend in total is going to be 
one where we're going to be dodging rain. 50 to 60 percent coverage of showers and even a few storms. Highs near 70 degrees. And then beyond the weekend, we'll have that front finally move through on Monday morning. That sets up a cooler week ahead. Our highs are only going to be generally in the 60s for most of next week. However, there is still another opportunity for rain, especially Tuesday and Wednesday. So an if then forecast if storms pop, then they'll be severe today. But your weather authority is watching very carefully and make sure you have your case out weather authority app. Got it right there. David Look, has it right looking now. at your radar right now. See, there it is. Yeah, there's your radar. Same thing you just showed us. And I wrote a little forecast. Discussion. Boy, we need the rain, but we don't need any of that severe stuff. But no. man, we need rain something fierce. Extreme drought out there. All right. Thanks, sir. It is 1249, 75 degrees. We'll be back. So while we might not see the sun over the next couple of days, the summers here are pretty bright and sunflowers can be a shining addition to your garden. In today's edition of Gardening with Case at Sarah Costa explains why sunflowers are important and how to get started. Sunflowers can act as the security guards or bouncers to your garden, distracting pests away from your other plants. They are good for wildlife, and most importantly, they can bring some major joy to your garden. I was inspired to plant sunflowers by a local woman from a memory care facility. Sunflowers can be wild. Look at the million of seeds. Look, a, a plant that tall grows from this tiny seeds. Let's take these seeds and see what they can do. I got a couple of varieties from Rainbow Gardens. I am planting border sunflowers, which can get five to six feet tall, and giant sunflowers that grow 12 to 14 feet tall. Sunflowers need full sun, so I watched where in my yard gets eight hours of sunlight before planting. You wanna till up your soil if these are going into new beds. It's important to add an organic compost. I also add it in organic seed starter to give my new flower garden a boost. Plant four to six inches apart and sow half an inch deep for the smaller varieties and an inch deep for the giant sunflowers. Make sure to keep the soil moist as those seedlings get started. Happy gardening, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Can't wait to see the sunflowers. It's Flashback Friday. Fiona has taken us back out to SeaWorld to try their new ride, the Catapult Falls. In an encore episode of SA Live, here is a sneak peek for you. Well, it is a fabulous Friday on the show today. And if you want to check out something this weekend, well, guess what? There is a brand new water coaster over at SeaWorld. We check it out for you, and we are going to tell you about how, uh, how you can win a family four pack of tickets. So you're going to want to stick around for that. And also, we take you inside a restaurant that has been around for dozens of years and what it is is now and how you can go enjoy it. And also it is National Kalachi Day. We are gonna tell you how you can celebrate with all sorts of flavors of kolaches. And Kelly Myring with Cocker Spaniel Rescue of Austin and San Antonio joins us. And who do we have here? Well, we have bourbon right here. This mm -hmm. is my foster, he's two years old. And uh, Bourbon was born without a kneecap in his back left leg, so he walks with an orthotic boot. Um, and then this is Champagne. She is 12 years old, and she's also fostering in the San Antonio area. And they're both up for adoption. They are. All that and more when SA Live continues in just a few minutes.